Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I hear you. Good evening. Everyone. Good evening. If I can ask everyone to please mute yourselves. We're a few minutes early. We'll let every, uh, other people join in. Let me get organized, get a couple of things, and we'll get started in a few minutes. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Bonnie. Gina, one of your friends emailed me asking for the link about five minutes ago. Are you able to forward her the email? I I really can't go searching for the email right now. Is that Dorothy? Oh, it might have been. Let me see. Angel soft. Hi everyone. Can you please mute yourselves? Uh, I don't know. It might have been. It says Gina's friend, but I. I have no idea where where the email came in to. I already sent it to Dorothy and I sent it to Marsha. It is Dorothy, yes. If you could forward it to Dorothy, it would be awesome. Okay, and I, I already did and I sent it to Marsha from him. Okay, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Senator. Good evening, Representative Urbina. Let's, it's 628. Let's give uh, people a couple more minutes to log on and I will be right back. Hey, Annabelle. Hi. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you. We're going to wait about two or three minutes more and we'll get started. Oh, it sounds great. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Everyone, this is Marty Kier. He is our Broward County property appraiser. Oh, um, great. It's nice to see everybody. I'm sorry that I have a hat on. I had surgery on my head recently. Um, but so I am, it was minor surgery, but the process for healing is like four months. So uh, if I took my hat off, half my head would be shaved. So if it's okay, that's the only reason I have it on. <laughs> so happy to have you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Marty, I, I want to introduce you. I have um, Florida State Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez is on. And oh. Hi, Anna. Hey, Marty, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to jump off the computer and jump on by my phone because for some reason, my, my, my camera is not working on my laptop. So let me jump off. Oh, sure. Okay, we'll see you soon. And we also have um, former state rep, uh, Julio Rabina on. I don't know if you... Hey. Yeah, Julio, hey, Marty, how are you, Marty? man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Annabelle Julio and I were in the legislature together. He's a great guy. Yes, he really and is. I, and I share the feelings exactly. So nice to see you, my friend. There's it's one of the good guys right there working hard for his constituents. So really um, nice to have you on here. Thank you, Julio. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Julio's yeah. awesome. You know what? Um, I have to tell you when, uh, so Annabelle, when I was in the legislature, 
you know, you know, I'm a Democrat. Julio was a Republican. And when you're in the legislature in Tallahassee and you're a Democrat, you know, it's not always easy to get things through. Uh, but it was always wonderful when you had people like Julio who had a lot of clout up there and, you know, would just reach across the aisle and say, hey, Marty, what kind of bills do you have and legislation do you have? Let's work on it together. And I can't tell you how many times he helped me and my colleagues get good stuff done. That wouldn't have happened if he didn't. So it's really good to see you, Julio. It definitely right, is. Thank you, sir, for that. And what a concept, huh? People working together. What's Absolutely. happening in this world we're living in? Incredible. Uh, get, <laughs> but uh, you're right. Working together is the most important thing. Mayor <laughs> yes, Cooper, sir. I see Mayor Cooper is on. Mayor, will you say hi? Hey, Julio. Hey, how Mayor, how are you? Great nice. to see you. You know, you've got some great people on here. And I would tell you, between Marty and Joy, Joy, I always tell everybody you were the first one to ever step up to help us deal with fraud and corruption in the city that mm -hmm. you know it exists. And I always tell the story how you were the first one to step <laughs> up and put it to work and watch what can be done when people work together. So, yeah. God, I don't know what to tell you, Annabelle. You keep bringing <laughs> these great folks, these meetings. <laughs> going to have 200 people on here shortly. <laughs> you know, that's very nice. Oh, God. Hey, <laughs> hey, Joy, how are you? Hey. Wait, good. Thanks. Wait, how, how's the Miami Mafia? The, oh, the, my God. The, it's, the Florida it Mafia, it the Broward Mafia has always been better, but, you know. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we, in, I think. In it's Dave an inside County, joke, people. Trust me. I understand. Like, we got but things Miami, done because we got things done. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I think Miami invents them, and then it goes from here all around the rest of the state of Florida. It's terrible, the stuff yeah. that goes on, but. <laughs> this is a this is a good group of people that understands the subject matter, and that's why again, thank you, uh, Annabelle, for putting these yeah. folks. These people all know what we're going to be talking about very clearly tonight. So, good. I'm honored to be here. Uh, it's 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 my absolute uh, privilege to know all of you and work with all of you. I'm very very lucky. I don't know if we have Commissioner Lazaro on or not. I think she said she was going to. Just pop in. There she is. Oh, there she is. Hi, Commissioner. You want to say a couple words? Uh, I, I do, but not at this moment. I'm sorry my picture is there and not my face, but I am here. I'm just in the middle of something, and I don't think you guys are going to want to see me moving around. So I'm listening, but I will join back in after you guys resume. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, Michelle. Hi. So we've got Marty Care on. I don't know if you can see or not, but we've got Marty on. Uh, so, all right, uh, it is 6.33, so we'll, we'll get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Before I begin, I just want to make a quick note uh, that this is a publicly noticed meeting, which means that my fellow colleagues, my uh, Mayor Cooper, Commissioner Lazaro, and if uh, I invited the other commissioners to join on, uh, we may openly discuss any items today or in the future that we might want to vote on. So we are not in violation of the um, government and sunshine law, and we can freely discuss any policies. So now we can all uh, join in. Uh, Mayor, thank you so much. I know you can make it last week, but you're here today. Um, so possibly, you know, if we can, at the end of the meeting, uh, address uh, Hallandale Beach residents. There were some questions about the building department and engineers and so forth. So if you could chime in at the end of the meeting. Okay. Uh, I know, <laughs> I know <laughs> we're uh, limited with time. I know uh, uh, Marty has to be off uh, by a certain time and the Senator as well. So everyone, thank you for joining. We have your, uh, one of the most uh, incredible uh, public servants, and I don't say that to be political, I really, really mean it. Marty Kerr, who is the Broward right. County property appraiser. Thank uh, you. <laughs> we have Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez. I am a oh, big, hi, big- San Hi, Senator. Hi, I'm sorry, I didn't say hello. Go ahead. Hello, Madam Mayor, how are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Annabelle. Well, no, 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 don't be sorry. Uh, <laughs> I am a huge fan uh, because for the last few years, whenever I talk to anyone about condo fraud, and you're going to hear my little dog in the background, condo fraud, um, I, I really was met with um, like crickets. I felt like I was involved more in a monologue than a dialogue. It was me talking and everyone just looking back and being <laughs> really not interested. Um, and 
you know, my, the honorable, as I call him, um, Florida, former uh, Florida state rep, Julio Ravina, the ordinance that we have in Hallandale Beach, a lot of the language uh, is due in part to your help. So this ordinance would not have been in place where, where you, uh, if you were not involved. So having said that, if we could please get started with Marty. Marty and I had a conversation earlier um, today, and he's going to tell you a little bit about how an initiative he worked on related to property fraud. Um, but also very exciting is that he's going to work on the property appraisers website to have a link to the floor to the Hallandale Beach um, condo registration website. And uh, to the, yep, and the ordinance, and hopefully we'll have uh, further meetings regarding the ordinance. And also, I know I reached out to you, but you said that the Broward, oh gosh, Broward Palm Beach and St. Lucie uh, Realtor mm -hmm. Association had already contacted you, and I had contacted you mm -hmm. today regarding adding to, to the, your website links to all the municipalities, so it would be really easy yes. for people to get to. So I will let you speak. I will be quiet now. Uh, if I can ask everyone except the mayor and the commissioner and elected officials to please kindly mute yourselves. We will get to your, we will get to your questions. Marty, it's all you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much, Annabelle. And it's so good to see you. And it's great to see everybody up here. Uh, mayor Cooper, it's great to see you and Michelle. I know I saw you just before you said you're walking around kind of, but uh, it's great to see you as well. And uh, and also I want to apologize to you all. I was supposed to speak at the Hollandale Beach City Commission on the 4th of August, but uh, again, I had to have surgery, minor surgery, uh, but I'm recovering. So I had to postpone that for about a month. So I'm really looking forward to coming just to talk with you all and let you know how property values are doing in Hollandale Beach. And also basically how, uh, how things are going there with regard to property values values, exemptions, and and uh, and other issues that are important to the residents of Hollandale Beach. Also, again, it's great to see Julio Rabina. I love Julio. Uh, you know, um, it's so neat for me whenever I get to see people I had the pleasure of serving with in the legislature, and there was no better public, public servant than Julio. I just uh, think he's such, such a great guy. And also, Senator Rodriguez, thank you for the work you're doing uh, on behalf of the people of the state of Florida and for Miami. I know um, recently mm -hmm. I had a conversation with Pedro Garcia, the Miami-Dade property appraiser, such a good guy, and he was singing your praises as well. So uh, it's just great to see everybody, and I'll, I'll be very quick. I know you all have a long meeting, and thank you so much, Annabelle. I apologize. I have to jump off you know, after I'm done talking, only because I have another uh, speaking engagement uh, that I have to jump on to. But I was really looking forward to this because Annabella has brought up, of course, some really important uh, topics that are designed to protect the condo owners and, and the and property owners of Hollandale Beach. And actually, uh, the ordinance, for example, that I know she's going to talk about is, you know, I, I think other cities are looking at it. Miami has really uh, taken a keen role in uh, some of its cities adopting it. And so I think it's a great act. It's just a transparency act. I know she's going to discuss that a little bit more, uh, but uh, she mentioned something that's very important. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, what happened in Surfside was terrible. And that was, I mean, just tra uh, travesty was devastating. I mean, uh, I can't even imagine what th the folks of, uh, you know, uh, are going through that lost family members and uh, and are, are just suffering. And that really did, though, bring a spotlight on condominiums and on the 40 year inspection and uh, after that. And I think and what happens with our office every single year, we send a list of properties to Broward County and also the cities about which uh, condo buildings uh, are ready for their 40 year inspection. And they ask for that and then they ask for everything from 40 to 50 years. And they try to figure out which one hasn't gone through their inspection. And then the cities themselves uh, generally conduct the inspection and they'll let the people know whether or not they passed or if they didn't. And if they didn't, sometimes there are assessments. There's a lot that goes into it to bring the building and to make it safe uh, for the residents. And so uh, Annabelle and I did have a nice conversation today uh, where I know, again, she passed this great transparency act that really uh, gave the people that live in these condominiums the opportunity to be able to, 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 to know things that they should know that their condo board is doing. Uh, and which is a great thing. And so what we're going to do in our office, we were contacted again by the Broward 
Palm Beach St. Lucie Realtor Association. There are uh, many thousands of realtors throughout the three counties. And what they asked us was they wanted to find an easy way to be able to find information about different buildings that have either passed their 40 year certification or uh, have not yet gone through it. And it's very difficult to find because again, every city generally does it on its own. And you really can't open up a website for many of the cities and find out any of that information. You have to figure out the department, figure out who to call, get in contact with them, sometimes do a public records request. There's a lot that goes into it. So they asked us if there was a way we could work with the cities to make it a little bit easier for people to ascertain that very important information. And so we've been going through it and we're still working on it. But one concept that we came up with, our website, we have two websites, web.bcpa.net and bcpa.net. They're two almost identical websites. One's just easier to use with smartphones, uh, but the other one's been around for a very long time. So uh, many people utilize it every single day, so we would never get rid of it. Uh, on both of those, there are going to be different links uh, to uh, the cities. You can click on the link and you'll see all the cities uh, that um, do their 40 year inspections. And then you're gonna have, you know, if they have anything on their current web pages pertaining to any, any information with regard to the 40 year inspection, we'll have links to that. If not, we're gonna put all the contact information in there for residents to contact. So it can be like a one-stop shop. So people know exactly, this is who I have to contact to find out about this building. And Annabelle, you know, I know she's going to talk about uh, the great ordinance that I thought was great, was actually adopted unanimously by the city of Hollandale Beach, which is a great thing. Uh, and we're going to um, make a uh, uh, put a link for that also on there as well. And also, I'm very much looking forward to working with Hollandale Beach to provide easy information to residents with regard to that. The second thing that I wanted to talk about, and I really appreciate Annabelle allowing me to speak about this, is what we call our new owner alert program. And I'm very proud of this program. This is a program that we developed in-house. We spent no taxpayer dollars doing it. And we've actually, and it's been a really good success designed to protect the people of Broward County. And here's what it does. Unfortunately, South Florida is the title fraud capital of the world. You have a lot of terrible, unscrupulous, I think criminals that do terrible things to people with regard to their property. And here's what they do. The recording divisions for every single, all the counties, every county in the state of Florida has a recording division, and they have to accept any document filed with them. Their job is ministerial. They can't verify anything, they have to accept it. And so what occurs is people, these criminals, file fake deeds on people's property. And then what they do is they take that fake deed and they try to extort people for money or mortgage rent or sell somebody's property. To give you, let me give you a couple examples. One thing that they like to do is they like to go through people's social media accounts and they see when you're on an extended vacation and they'll say, okay, I'm going to file a fake deed on this person's property. They'll then take that deed and do something pretty bad to it. And then what the, uh, to that property. Another thing, another ex example, it happened actually in Broward County not too long ago where you had this terrible individual filed a fake deed on a 97 year old his property, his condo. He then showed up to his house and said, hey, I now own your property. You have to give me 5,000 bucks. And the guy got scared and he did. And the guy, of course, ran away. They never found him. It's really terrible. Uh, to give you an idea, I learned you know, recently that the FBI has 50 active, massive criminal investigations going on in South Florida alone against people doing this on massive scales. And so we wanted to give the people of Broward County the opportunity to protect themselves for the fraud uh, from this fraud. And here's why. Because when people do this, generally, they're never going to get your property, but it's going to cloud your title. And then what's going to occur is going to cost you a whole lot of time and a lot of money to try to clear that up. And so we wanted to help people give them information before the fraud can occur. So we set up the owner alert program, again, that was developed in-house, and we spent no taxpayer dollars doing it. And here's what it does. Uh, if you go to web.bcpa.net slash owner alert, you can then type in your name and you can type in your email address. And if we have your email address on file already, then what occurs is you are already uh, verified, you are good to go, and you'll be alerted if somebody files something on your property. If we don't have your email address on file, then what occurs is we ask for your Florida driver's license information, your Florida ID information. If we don't have that, there are other ways to get verified. Once you're verified, if somebody files a, uh, if any document changing ownership on your property is filed, you'll be in instantaneously notified. And so you can protect yourself uh, in case anybody uh, 
tries to uh, defraud you out of your property or files a fake deed on your property, it's a great thing. So far in just the past few months, we've had 119,000 Broward County homeowners sign up for owner alert. And we've actually notified about 4,000 people uh, that um, have where their ownership has uh, changed hands. And many of those, most of those, hopefully almost all of those were legitimate. Uh, but I did hear there were a few that were not. And those people then took the appropriate steps to be able to protect themselves. Um, with that said, uh, Annabelle, I know you all have a very long meeting. Uh, I've had a lot of coffee today, uh, so I could talk forever. But if anybody has any questions, it would be my absolute pleasure. I do think somebody typed, asked in the chat if I would put the, um, the address in there for it. Uh, I know Annabelle put it in there. Uh, Annabelle actually put it in there, which is great. Uh, does anybody have any questions? There is a question um, from okay. George for you, Marty. Marty, sure. what has happened to property values since the Surfside tragedy, especially in mm. older condominiums? Thank you from Canada. Sure, thank, thank you, George, for that question. It will, right now it's, it's too early to really determine whether or not that that has had an impact on property values. The one thing I can tell you uh, for certain is that the property uh, market in South Florida is on fire right now. And that's with condominiums. It's with single family homes. I mean, people are paying a lot of money to move here. And so many of the people moving here are coming from the North. They're coming from New York or Connecticut or Cal even from California, from the West, anywhere where there's a state with an income tax, people are leaving there and they're coming to Florida to live here and they're paying a lot of money. So, so far, you know, uh, every single day we see uh, deeds and, you know, people making different purchases. And so far, uh, I haven't seen a, a dip in the uh, current market. Uh, you know, we'll we'll know more uh, as we review the numbers for next year. But uh, but right now, uh, the one thing I can say almost for certain is that our uh, you know people are paying a lot of money for properties, and I do not I there we haven't seen any indication of any decrease in property values uh, as of yet. I have a question for Marty. Sure. Marty, one other thing that I know it's real big here in South Florida, I work with Pedro Garcia all the time. Mm -hmm. My world is looking into fraud and corruption in these communities. Mm -hmm. You know that one of the things that we find when people call to complain, a lot of times owners that are in a community with a lot of renters, we're finding yes. that a lot of owners are claiming homestead exemption on yes. those properties. And they're also, you know, that's that's fraud that's committed. Yes. You guys have an, an aggressive program like Pedro does in Dade County, where he goes after these people. There's a crime involved. They have to back pay it because that's becoming an incredible daily fraud. Leave it to Miami-Dade County to be number one in that. So that's my only question. Are you guys tackling that oh, yeah. issue? That is such a great question. And and Julio, I, by the way, I love Pedro. He is such a great guy. He's such a gentleman. He works so hard for the people of Miami-Dade. And you're right, he does have an excellent, excellent fraud division in Miami-Dade County. And one thing uh, that I think is great is the three South Florida property appraisers the, of the big counties, uh, Pedro, myself, and Dorothy Jackson, the Palm Beach County property appraiser, we actually work together on a whole lot of these issues. And what we do is we actually share from our offices what really works, what hasn't worked. And uh, our fraud divisions is something that we've actually all worked on together as well. Uh, and, you know, sharing uh, when we get together, we talk about different things, you know, what we're doing. And uh, in our office, we have a very, very aggressive fraud division. You know, my view is this. If somebody's entitled to a homestead exemption or any type of tax saving exemption, they should get it. They've earned it under the law. That's their exemption. However, if somebody isn't doing it and they're knowingly frauding the system, they're basically getting a tax saving exemption on a property when they're not allowed to get that exemption and they're getting a tax break. That's wrong, that's inappropriate, and that is big time fraud. And the penalties are also big time as well. Because if somebody does that, if they claim improperly a homestead exemption, our office is allowed to back tax people up to 10 years, uh, in, it, it include a 50% penalty and 15% interest. They can owe many, many thousands of dollars. Uh, but you know the reason that's the case is because the legislature wanted to deter people from cheating the system. And to give you an idea, our fraud division has put many, many billions of dollars of value back on the tax roll that people have to pay taxes on. And we've collected about 70 to $80 million in back taxes of recent years and have returned that to the taxpayers. So it's, it's something we take very, very uh, seriously. We also, in our office, 
just about every single person in our fraud division are retired law enforcement officers. And that's something I like very, very much because they believe it's almost like their public duty to find people who are frauding the system. And then there are other things that we do as well. We also work with cities, for example, to, to crack down on fraud. Uh, one thing we did with the city of Hollywood, for example, is we uh, worked with their utility department and we figured out who was on the utility bill and if there were, and if somebody different was on listed as the homestead exemption. And if there was a discrepancy, we would go out and investigate it. And many times it turned out to be fine, but we also did find many hundreds of properties where it wasn't fine and we were able to, to make that right. So it's actually something we take very seriously because uh, I look at that as really preserving and protecting taxpayer dollars. And so thank you for that question. I know I hope I don't sound like I'm on a, a soapbox, but uh, that is uh, something that I'm you know really, really, very really important. proud of. It is. It is. And thank and thank you for working uh, with, um, you know, with Pedro on that, Julio. And uh, and also I saw that uh, Senator Rodriguez, I'm so happy. I think she te she put in the chat that she is working with uh, actually my state representative, Michael Gottlieb, to increase the widow's exemption, which I think is a wonderful thing. I was yep. going to bring that up. Pa Pedro actually told me she, he was going to reach out uh, to Senator Rodriguez. And I think that's a great thing. And to give you an idea, if somebody is a widow or a widower, uh, you're entitled to a small exemption. If you already have a homestead exemption, you get a small exemption. It's what's called a $500 value exemption. Now, here's the thing, though. That's not $500 off. That really is just $500 of value. So that's what you pay taxes on. It really only means right now that you save about $9 a year in your property taxes. It's very nominal. What Senator Rodriguez is doing is working with my state representative, Michael Gottlieb, and they're going to work this year to increase that amount to make it possibly $5,000 of value, something to where people are really saving money, maybe $100, whatever it comes to. And then you have real money that you actually get to save if you're a widow or widower. And I think that's very fair. And that was the intent, I think, of the Florida voters when they put that in the Constitution. So thank you so much, Senator Rodriguez, for doing that. My pleasure. Great. And Mayor, Mayor, please, you don't have to put your hand up, Mayor. Chime in anytime. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. But first of all, thank you, Marty. And, and you kind of touched on it. Um, and I know I've contacted your office a couple of times where people have a homestead here and then they have a homestead in Miami. So with the new technologies, I'm so glad that you're cross-referencing these. But major question. How can our technology help you? And obviously your technology can help us. So is, tell oh, me, such a, unless you want to do it offline, how we can oh, ensure that we're doing our cross-referencing as well. No. That is such a great question. I appreciate that so much, Mayor Cooper. And thank you for the great work that you do for the, the people of Hollandale Beach as well. And, uh, you know, we've been friends for a long, long time. And Not that uh, long, just, not that long. <laughs> no. uh, it's been a couple decades now. You know what I mean? It, it definitely has, but it's, uh, so, but, um, but you do, you do awesome. And uh, um, so, uh, you know, well, there are a number of things we can do with the city. One thing, if you all would like, is I, you know, like I said, when we worked with Hollywood, in particular with the utility bill, Right. Uh, that was very helpful, especially when you have communities where you have lots of condominiums. Uh, you know, and I know Hollandale Beach has a significant amount of condom, uh, you know, uh, condominiums. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so there are if we could work with your utility department, especially in that, we could definitely see if there is a difference between the utility bill and whoever is listed as a homesteaded property owner. And then that would just give us an idea as to, okay, let's just go investigate this to determine whether or not uh, the people that are there are, should still be homesteaded or if they're renting the property or something of that nature. And really what will occur is if we find out that they're renting the property, we'll just really just, and it's innocent, we'll just adjust the value uh, to reflect what, it, what it should be to give you to for the folks on the on the zoom call the way it works is when you file for homestead the save our homes assessment clause of the florida constitution kicked in and what that means was and what that means is every single year after you have a homestead exemption the value you're taxed on can't go up more than a maximum of three percent so over the over the years if especially if you're a longtime property owner your market value gets very very high but your assessed value is capped it stays low so you have all this value you don't pay taxes on if you start renting your property and you, you know, and you're, you know, no longer homestead at that at that property, then what would occur is you would lose all of that value. We would reset it to market value, and you would just pay, you would just pay the on the value you're supposed to pay on. And so that's really what would occur in a situation like that. But I would love to do that. And also, Joy, mm -hmm. I would love to talk to you more about it, um, uh, maybe on the phone. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a number of things we can do that um, you know, we're, we can definitely work together. Uh, 
but it would you know it'd be a much longer conversation if that's okay. Thank, thank you, property. Thank you, property appraiser. Always Marty. Thanks. But then, <laughs> thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? You guys are great. So before you get off, if anyone has any questions, I don't want to put Commissioner Lazaro on the Actually, spot. I just have a question. There you okay. are. Hey, hey, Michelle, how are you? Oh, good, Marty. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You'll be very proud of me. We actually, it wasn't a dog, but we just uh, rescued a little kitten from the oh. uh, Broward Animal Care. And um, we're so excited about it. Yeah. My, uh, the way it worked was my daughters, uh, they go, hey, daddy, can we have a kid? And I go, absolutely not. We already have a dog and a cat. And they go, well, if we get a kid, we'll make the middle name Marty. And I'm like, all right. So I gave them <laughs> such a pushover. So it's Maggie Marty. So, so that's, her, that's her name. But she's been just a joy. Well, that's great. I'm sure Commissioner Tubbs is also very happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> we're working on some initiatives in Hallandale. So we'll, I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that. Oh, that's great. That is great. Um, so, you know, we had two things happen. One is, first of all, thank you for helping my senior who had changed her homestead and explained to her that she was not available to do it this year, but that it would come next year. And you guys walked yes. her through that because she's not computer great. literate. Thank you for that. I greatly appreciate oh, that. And then my pleasure. So your office is very uh, willing and ready and able to help them. The other thing is that I want you to just remind everybody that there was a case here where his mother died, he was living in the apartment and she hadn't deeded or claimed the yes. property to him, at which case his, his tax rate then went up. So can you yes. tell people what they can do to protect themselves in case they wanna leave their homes to their roommates or to their kids? Yes. Or okay. That, that is such a great question. Now, um, when I answer uh, this question in particular, the first thing that I have to, to make reference to is that every property appraiser throughout the state of Florida treats this a little bit differently. Uh, this is uh, basically an issue where the law is very gray. So we're able to, to have some, uh, some leeway here. And uh, here's what we do. Uh, here's what I always tell people in Broward County. Uh, so let's say uh, you're a mother and you own a property. And let's say you've been there for a very long time. Well, if you've been there for a long time and it's been your homestead for a long time, your assessed value is gonna be much, much, much lower than your market value because of that cap we spoke about before. Now, what'll occur is, let's say that mother has an adult son that lives with her and the adult son's not in the deed and not homesteaded. And then if the mother passes on, uh, what'll occur is because the son was never put on the deed and never homesteaded at that property, the, 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 the value gets reset to market value, which basically means the amount of value that the, the son will now pay property taxes on is going to be much greater than what his mother's value was. And maybe the son couldn't afford the property at that time. So there are ways to where a, uh, that mother could protect her son from that occurring. And in Broward County and in many other counties, this is how we interpret the law. Basically, if uh, if you uh, change the deed, uh, you add that your son, and that if that mother added her son while she was alive to the deed as joint tenants with right of survivorship, and mm -hmm. then she also made it his homestead, then what would occur is when she passed passes away, he would then take the property, but because it was already he was on the deed and it was his homestead, the value that he pays tax on would basically be the same as what his mom was paying tax on. He wouldn't lose all of that save our homes value that was uh, accumulated. And so that's one way that that mother could have protected uh, her son in the situation that I gave. A couple of things though to note is if you, you if, let's say you're in that situation, you really need to trust your son or daughter you're putting on the deed with you uh, because uh, once you put somebody on the deed with you, they're then now owners of that property as well. And you can't do anything with that property unless they also agree to do it. Uh, so there are a lot of different situations, but I always tell everybody in Broward County, what I've learned about property is every situation is unique. Uh, what may work for one legally may not work for another legally. So I always tell everybody, if you whatever your situation is, email me at martycare at bcpa.net or call me and we'll go through your situation together along with our staff. And then we'll go through it and figure it out and we'll give you as much guidance as we possibly can so you can make the best decision for you and your family. I, I hope that, that answered the question, Michelle. You did. Thank you. Thank you. And thank thanks you. again for everything you're doing. Oh, thank you. And thanks you again for inviting me on the joint, joint, Can you just say it one more time? Joint survival right of ownership? Oh, yeah, it's a, a joint tenancy with right of survivorship. Okay, thanks.
close. Jo or joint tenancy right of survivorship. There's um there's a few. So you have tenancy in common. If you have a if the deed yeah, that's tenancy in common, I don't want to I don't want to take up any more of her time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this would be joint okay. tenancy right of survivorship. Big agenda. You know, you said I got very excited because I know you do. You I know, Marty. It's so great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you, Michelle. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Marty, I just want to note that I see uh, Adam Sanders is here from the Broward. It's I love that. Broward, Palm Beach, Port St. Lucie, Realtor is, Association. I also have uh, Danielle Blake from the Miami Realtor Association on oh, as well. Hey, Danielle. So. How are you? Adam and Danielle, it's so good to see you guys. What's up? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Adam, we were actually talking before about um actually I, I don't know if i i'm supposed to i'm going to send you all an email um basically we i took all of the information we spoke about last week and um well, i think we figured out a way uh to be able to to make the information a little bit more readily available for everybody with regard to the 40-year inspections so it's uh with it without a doubt so <clears throat> and then i did see that email today i honestly we've been on the go and then I sent it to my uh, chairman and my vice chairman to see what they thought, but great. all of them were good, good suggestions. It was a good meeting, honestly. It, it was a great meeting. It definitely was. Oh, good. I'm glad that you got, I, I couldn't remember if I had copied you on it. So I'm glad I did, but excellent. Um, I'm really, I really appreciate it. So uh, it was a great meeting. You know what? Um, I just love the realtors. I think that the Broward, uh, Palm Beach, St. Lucie board and the Miami board of realtors, you all are awesome. And to let everybody here know up here, what I think is pretty amazing is what the realtors do. They know how to advocate for really good issues. And when, and Julio can probably mm -hmm. attest to this as well. When you're in the legislature and people are coming to you, most of the people that are advocating for different issues are not from your community, but the realtors, the Fort Lauderdale board and also the Miami board, what they do is they send up your constituents to, uh, to uh, advocate about issues. And it's, and it is really impactful. And they do, they both, both boards do an incredible job. Thank you. Thank you. Danielle, thank did you. you want to say something? I think I saw you unmute yourself. Oh, I just said, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, hey, Danielle. I'll mute it's it back. Good. Thanks so much uh, for the uh, input. And, the and then honestly, um, appraiser mr appraiser and then danielle we didn't get a chance to it was pretty late in the day but i, I read everything and then i sent it to my chair my vice chair and um great. pretty much everything we talked about we were they were very accommodating to the meeting i thought it was great you're not in the neck brace oh i know i'm very happy so i'm good now <laughs> so i have like i hope but i do have like <laughs> half a mohawk though so that's like <laughs> i was I afraid to post i did post one picture of it but i was afraid uh, <laughs> you know what uh la la to let everybody know i know this is a long meeting but last week i was really in rough shape after my surgery so i had like a neck brace on this and that but uh but everyone was very very nice to me and nobody everybody promised me that they would not utilize that as the picture that comes up when i call them so, <laughs> so but, so but i did post it <laughs> i posted okay. one of them and, I, and oh, all I jokes aside oh, sorry go ahead i'm yeah. sorry go ahead Ed. that's it i'm sorry commissioner between the two associations i think you know it's right on the county line and the property appraiser it was great to have that meeting with us last week um, I didn't know what would come of it. That's why I was a little wishy-washy in the email where, where I said it wasn't a specific ask or not, but we have a lot of passionate members and I thought it was a great, it was a great, I thought it was a great, of all the meetings we had in the past week or two weeks, it was, it was genuine and it was passionate. Oh, thank you. I and really you know what it is, that. like you said, you, you know, you don't want to talk about Surfside or uh, specific things, but it, these are things that have happened in our lives. So we have to, mm -hmm. we have to talk about them. I mean, it, and, and well, if it makes it relevant to the next, the next mm -hmm. group of people, then, yes. then we'll talk about and it. And it's, it's relevant, Absolutely. relevant to the families as well. To yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's why the, thank you. <laughs> really. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's why the, the, appraiser we don't feel comfortable talking about these things but we need to sometimes if we can yeah. like you just said madam mayor yes absolutely absolutely well said adam without a doubt but um, well thank you I'll guys very up. much <laughs> this, <laughs> no no you guys are awesome like does anybody else have any other questions is there uh anything else i can do well uh, i'll tell you what. 
uh, I don't know if this is for you or not. It might be for okay. the senator, or but is there any additional requirements for for the fifty year old buildings? Oh, um, that that's is a question. To change. That's that's all about to change. So we want to get into that subject matter. So we'll get um, into that. Let's let's um let's let Marty. I know Marty has another meeting. So first, I I want to wish you a speedy recovery. Um, thank you. Thank you for always being so, you know, responsive and, oh, you know, so amenable, you. always super friendly. I'll never forget oh, the first thank you. friendly person I met in 2016 <laughs> when I decided to run and you were so kind to me and I oh, had no idea what I was doing. And that's you really, Marty. <laughs> oh, thank you. Really you really made oh, me feel uh, comfortable. I felt like I was in a room oh. full of wolves and then there was you oh, and it was, oh, you know, no. I thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Annabelle. I really, We're really in a room full that. of wolves. I was in oh, that yeah. room. Okay. <laughs> a room full of wolves. Yeah. You, well, uh, but, you, thank you. That's so nice. You all are awesome. And I just uh, can't tell, tell you, Annabelle and everybody on here, thank you so much for inviting me on. And, and also just to let everybody know, uh, you're about to receive a document from me in the mail. It's the trim notice, the truth and millage notice. It's a document to make sure that your tax bill that comes out in November is going to be correct. If you have any concerns, call me, email me. You have till September 20th for us to go through it. But with that said, Annabelle, you're awesome. Thank you all so Marty, much we'll for see having you at, me on. We'll see you at our meeting in September, yes? Yes, yes I'm real excited about it. And thank you, Michelle, for inviting me on the 4th. Like I said, I it, because of the surgery, I couldn't come, but uh, but I'll definitely be there on the 4th. And I hope you all won't mind. I'll actually have a hat on, if that's okay. All but, right. It, just for the next couple of months, but I'm really looking forward to seeing y'all. Okay, we'll thank see you. That. Speedy thank recovery. You. Thanks, Thank you, bye, everybody. Oh, you too, Julio. Great friend. to see you. Take nice care. seeing you, my friend. You too. All right. Uh, thank you again, Marty. Um, I think, you know, for the residents, what I really want you to take away is that there are different um, electeds that are, are working towards targeting, targeting fraud. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think we're the only state, so the our property appraiser's office is the only uh, office in the state that created this um, property alert um, uh, to tackle fraud. So I don't know if in the country, but definitely in the state of Florida. So we're really we're really lucky. I mean, in some in some ways in Broward County we're really behind, and then in other ways we are uh, really uh, you know setting. Uh, precedents. Uh, I do want to bring this up. I don't know if you know this, um, Representative, but Bay Harbor Islands is actually has the model of the ordinance that you and I worked on. They have it on the agenda for tonight. So it's first reading. So, yes, thank you. So hopefully, hopefully it'll, it'll pass. And um, uh, I'm in talks with a, a few other elected officials and hopefully we can we can, we really, what we want to do is to have to the counties that uh, follow the same model or, or mm -hmm. similar models, but it's, you know. it's, it's being shared on the task force as well. I just sent it to all the members of the new 40 year inspection task force, awesome. as well as the executive director of Broward league. So yeah. we're, awesome. we're good. Thank, thank you, Mayor. All right, let's get right to the questions. Um, and also it really, really important to note what Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez does and has been doing. And I think it's been a very lonely uh, sort of, you know, place for her fighting for condos because it's not really an exciting subject. But I, let me just give you a little anecdote. So right after the collapse, uh, I think it was a week later or maybe 10 days later, I did a quick interview with Channel 6. And the reporter says to me, oh, uh, she was talking about the, the bar association that they were going to come up with a condo task force. And I said to her, oh, no, 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 no. You need to call Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez because she actually brought this up and I'm sorry to refer to you as she, but uh, you know, uh, she brought it up, Senator brought it up uh, and couldn't get a co-sponsor. So you really should be calling her and talking to her because this is just, somebody is taking on what she's worked on and, uh, you know, really copying it. And it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's disingenuous. So, you know, we have to give credit where credit is due. And actually, if anyone wants to look back earlier this year, I sp sponsored a resolution in support of that and the entire commission 
um, supported it. So this is this is all you, Senator, and uh, of course, Representative Rabina. So let me get straight to the questions, and then towards the end, we might have some more city-related questions that Mayor and, and Commissioner can probably get to. But let's get let me get through with a couple. Let's start with. What can you do when the president of the association refuses to have elections? And Senator, if you want, if you'd like to chime into any of these, please do. Wow. So what can you do when the president of the association refuses to have elections? So uh, commissioner, first of all, good evening. Thank you so much for inviting me. My name is Ana Maria Rodriguez. As you said, uh, I'm the state senator for district 39, which is just to give people a reference point. It's the Western part of Miami-Dade County, like west of Doral, uh, all the way to the county line. And then it goes all along the western part of Miami-Dade down to Key West. So I actually represent Monroe, all of Monroe County and all of, all of western Miami-Dade County. Mm -hmm. um, and just to also kind of give you a little background, um, I served in the Florida House of Representatives for two years, um, representing Doral all the way to Collier County. I represented Naples as well, and a piece of Broward County. I was part of the Broward delegation. Uh, for two years. And then uh, prior to that, I served eight years in uh, the city of Doral City Council. So I'm intimately familiar with city issues and local issue, home rule issues. And uh, it's such an honor to be here with uh, Marty, uh, with Representative Robina, uh, yourself, Commissioner Mayor Cooper, uh, Commissioner Lazaro as well, um, and all the residents of Hallandale that are uh, Hallandale Beach that are on this call, as well as my colleagues. Um, Danielle Blake, who I work with at the Miami Association of Realtors. I just want to mention, give a plug to my association and say hello to Adam Sanders from our from the other uh, Realtor Association uh, in Broward. So um, to kind of give you all an idea of what uh, Annabelle was referring to, Commissioner. Um, oh, Annabelle's perfect. Annabelle's perfect. Commissioner. Commissioner. <laughs> um, so, okay, so last session I sponsored a bill which would have created a condominium fraud task force uh, pilot program. And it would have only included Broward, Miami-Dade County and Monroe County. So it was gonna be a, an experiment. Pilot programs, you know, are just to kind of test the waters, see how it goes. Um, and so the bill uh, basically did not get a hearing. It didn't move. As so, so just to kind of reiterate what you said, you know, I was, I was filing this before it became a thing, before it became the talk of the town uh, after the Surfside tragedy, which um, was a huge uh, turning point in our, in our community and a huge wake up call. Um, from a construction standpoint, I would say, yes, of course, it, it is a turning point from the construction standpoint, but I think it's e even greater turning point from the condominium standpoint, because um, a lot of these things could, could be avoided um, and, and should be avoided. So what does this bill do? And I, and I'm, I have the bill in drafting right now. Uh, so it's, I am planning to file it again this session. And I know that many of my colleagues are probably planning to do uh, other pieces of legislation addressing uh, condominiums as well as construction. But I really feel as if, um, you know, the, the Florida building code is, is one of the strongest in the nation um, currently. And I, I think in South Florida, particularly, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know that the construction is, is really the, the uh, culprit as much as the lack of funds that, were, that the condominiums are setting aside to address these deferred maintenance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but my bill doesn't address anything to do with, um, you know, making um, the mandatory, you know, the, the minimum, the 10 percent. Um, budget reserves. I, I'm not even talking about that in my legislation. I just want you all, but I have a feeling that some of my colleagues may be bringing that up because if, a, if a, an association doesn't have the, the minimum uh, reserves in their accounts, you know, and these, an, an engineer comes and says, you have to do A, B, and C, and you don't have the money and everyone on, you know, votes and says, no, we can't do it because we don't have the money. Then, you, you know, you're going to see a lot of you know, bad things happening over the next few decades if, if we don't, if people don't address these problems. But in terms of the actual uh, fraud that's happening on the ta on, on the in the condominiums, I'll talk to you about the legislation. So what we do is, we would be again um, creating this task force. It would be under the office of the attorney general, uh, which is Ashley Moody. Um, I think it's important to have our state attorney general be the the 
arbiter, the one overseeing this, um, this uh, task force, uh, we would create a public-private uh, partnership uh, with retired law enforcement, similar to what Marty just said um, with what they're doing, that they're using retired law enforcement, we would uh, do the same. And they would be specializing in fraud and corruption in condominiums. Um, the uh, ombudsman who was on the call last week, uh, Spencer Hennings, would ostensibly be under the attorney general's office and not under the DBPR. That's, that's one of the things that my bill would, would address. Um, the other thing uh, that, the, it, that it does is it establishes the ombudsman office responsibility to screen complaints and to forward the findings to the correct agency for investigation. So let's say the occurrence is in Hallandale Beach. And so what we would do is have the attorney general's uh, office, you know, do all this through the through this task force, they would do all the investigation, basically wrap it up. Yeah, put a bow on it and then send it to your state attorney's office so that they don't have to expend resources on uh, investigating. A lot of state attorneys, including the one that where I live in Miami-Dade County, have, have had some pushback. They've expressed a little bit of apprehension because their budgets are extremely limited. Um, and so they aren't getting increases, you know, year over year. They're, they're literally just barely, you know, keeping their budgets intact. So for them to take on an additional responsibility like this is, is a very daunting task. So um, we're looking at the pilot program being done through the attorney general's office. And I'll explain the funding for that in just a minute. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and read a, one, a couple more bullet points here. So what we would be doing is we would be establishing uh, the hiring of personnel uh, to accomplish the goals of the task force and provide inspectors with subpoena powers. That's a really big deal because right now, a person like Spencer Hennings, who is our ombudsman, does not have subpoena powers. We need to have teeth. Any legislation that we file has to have teeth. If we don't have teeth, no one's mm -hmm. going to take it seriously and they're going to just ignore it. So um, the task force will consist of five financial investigators, uh, again, with subpoena powers, five non-sworn investigators with previous law enforcement experience, FDLE shall provide five certified law enforcement officers, again, with subpoena powers, arrest powers, and with the ability to present criminal cases to the state attorney's office, having jurisdiction. And lastly, the task force will be funded um, through the Florida Condominium Trust Fund. This is already an existing revenue source for the state of Florida. We already have money coming in uh, to that. So it's not as if we have to create a new funding source. We don't have to take it out of general revenue, as somebody suggested today that I spoke to uh, offline. Uh, no, we, this is all going to be done um, through an existing uh, recurring revenue uh, stream. Um, so with that, um, we can go ahead and start the questions, but that's just an overview of, of the legislation that I wanted to kind of share with everybody. And Julio, if, if there's anything I missed or that you would like to add to this uh, mm -hmm. summary, feel free to chime in. The only thing I want to tell you is thank you. We have a lot of laws, but we don't have the way to actually enforce. And it's time that we start enforcing what we have. This is the number one complaint, Senator, that mm -hmm. you have gotten. Danielle will chime in and tell you we've worked together. This mm -hmm. should have been done a long time ago. Unfortunately, it took a tragedy. And have you noticed that there's negligence and all kinds of other things that are involved in the problem that happened, uh, unfortunately, the situation mm -hmm. in Surfside, this, mm -hmm. I think, is the most awaited and longest needed piece of legislation ever. Because DBPR, in my, in my eyes, they're administrative. Let them do the administrative. But where is the criminal element? Where's the side where the state attorneys say, I don't have manpower. I'm going to use Hollandale, if I may, for a second as an example. Mm -hmm. If they mm -hmm. work for your mayor, Mayor Cooper, when we had a problem at Parker Towers or Parker Plaza. Plaza. Parker Plaza. If you guys wouldn't have dedicated a wonderful detective, which was willing to do an intensive investigation, mm -hmm. never would those arrests have taken place. And those people would have been defrauded about out of lots and lots of money. So what you're doing is excellent. And I commend you. I know it's not going to be easy, Anna Maria. There's going to be a lot of pushback. Yeah. We all know I'm not going to mention them because there are people online I can see that are from a certain background or profession that are not going to like this but you know who's owed this the residents of the state of florida and why are we doing it in pilot because if it's not happening in dade or broward or monroe 
it's probably not at the level that we experience here. Mm -hmm. Kudos to you. Thank you so much. And bring on the questions because this is a no brainer for me. Okay. May I just right away? Because I was like, first of all, <laughs> thank you. And I, and I agree. And I, I actually, from the result of that, we actually pushed to have like white collar in our police department. So, mm -hmm. so our residents know that, um, you know, and, and these investigations are extensive, they're mm -hmm. long, and, you know, you have to have that wherewithal to have um, the financial um, ability and forensic ability that I think is extremely important. Now, I know um, that everybody's bringing up on my task force now this $4 per condo for timeshares, so on and so forth. So that would be that fund. Now, DPR controls that fund now, or is it controlled by a separate trust and they, DPR goes and then Mr. Hennings goes? Or, or I need to be the educated by that. The legislature okay. controls it. So they control it. So it's not in their department because the other focus that is going to be on, and, and I think it's critically important, I keep hearing it, everybody hears it, is a requirement for education, education, education. So I think you're going to end up hearing that out of Broward. Um, we'll see how it goes. They've already added on another day to the task force, but I was just curious because, um, and I think this is a bill that um, the ombudsman supported as well, correct? Yes. And, and okay. let me jump in I on think that. That's really cool. No, because I, I, you know, it, with everything that happened with Champlain Towers, uh, I'm hearing the dialogue. It's good. They're going to start going to this four dollars. And I think they should. I mean, it shouldn't be swept. Uh, you know, this whole conversation of there shouldn't be trust funds and we should control everything. It's a trust fund for that. So, so, so Mayor Cooper, just to clarify, um, the ombudsman technically cannot take political positions. So correct. He okay. He's not Correct. technically in favor or against this bill. Oh, okay. You know, he's so kind of like an that. independent. I and yeah, I misspoke so. because let, let me jump in, uh, Senator, if I may. I created through legislation the ombudsman's office. That's my child. And mm -hmm. I know what his intent was, was to have teeth and to have power. What it ended up being was, unfortunately, a person who's in a division which again controls them. And my goal when we established an ombudsman, it took a lot of pushing to create that office, became a toothless tiger. I guess that's the terminology. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's been me the whole time. I want to be clear. Spencer doesn't give opinions and he does what okay. the legislature does in the form of setting policy. That's right. why I and the Senator and, and Danielle, we've worked on this. We need to put him somewhere where he's not going to be hindered. That's my opinion in the attorney general's office. It's a no brainer. And his budget will be paid as the senator explained. And I know she has to go real soon, oh, but I'm the sorry. money needs to come from the money that people have been putting for years into that fund that's been swept to use for roads and parks and everything else. It's about time that that money's used properly. And you know what? Now is the time to go ahead and do this. And this is why I will tell you the ombudsman is a key component. He's, you'll watch him when he's able to do his thing because Spencer gets it. He's out there. He's a people person, the kind of person that's out there and understands. Unfortunately, as the senator explained, he can't take a political position on anything. It could cost him his job. Okay. But we can. The senator can. We can advocate for him. And, Mayor, you've been there. Your city was one of the test grounds of what can happen when we start doing these type of programs and I love that you guys have your own police department that does it. But guess what? Miami-Dade County, when you tell them it's a fraud issue, oh, we don't have the manpower. It's a civil matter. It's not a civil matter. Uh, it's fraud. And most, even mismanagement is fraud. So you watch. I guarantee you, when we get this bill passed, this, this, this task force will probably get the bulk of all the problems being sent through them, screened through the ombudsman's office. I'll bet anybody that you'll see this. And finally, you know that this sends a message that we're not taking this anymore. We have created a criminal side investigative element to tackle this. If anybody disagrees that this is necessary, I want to meet that one person because I haven't met him yet. Anybody that, that disagrees that this is a necessity. So I'll leave it there because I know the senator has got to go shortly. And let, let me just allow me to chime in for a moment as I know you have to go, Senator. Um, I see everyone's questions. We're going to get to your questions. Please don't worry. Um, you know, uh, uh, the Julio, I'm sorry, Representative 
Robina will fill oh, yeah. us the senator in. Um, but you know, I, I have some HOA friends and neighbors that mm -hmm. feel not in my HOA, but other HOAs that feel like the step stepchildren, so to speak, and wanted to know if you would advocate for them as well, because they uh, you know, they experience similar issues within their respective HOA. So I know there are a couple of them on here from an HOA and I don't want them to, they felt left out last week. I want them to feel left the, out this week. HOAs, if I may, very quickly, unfortunately they're not regulated through the state of Florida, so they don't pay. We've been trying to model 720, which was what regulates HOAs under 718. It should be a mirror, but it's been a problem. If they were regulated, it'd make it easier. However, one provision that you will see, because it's in some of the language, is to start providing HOAs with the, with the powers of the ombudsman, which you'll still carry over into the attorney general's office to on the part of elections and be able to call an election fraudulent yeah. and be able to do that. We can only deal with what is allowed currently in statute and it's very limited, unfortunately, what's in HOAs in comparison to condos. Until there is a regulatory part of HOAs, which basically means they're going to pay $4 or $3 and be regulated under the state of Florida, then they'll have the full benefits. Unfortunately, they're not there yet. There's been a push year after year, and I think it's long overdue that they model yeah, to be 720 done. over 718. But that's another battle. And I know Citizens for Cyber Justice and the gentleman in Yan has been advocating for years. I don't know if that'll happen this year. Because I think the goal is to get this fraud stuff committed, you know, done and taken care of. Um, but that's the answer to your question, why they only get so much consideration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just to answer the first question, which was, if your, uh, so see, if your condo uh, president isn't willing to hold an election, you need to call <laughs> Spencer Hennings. You need to call him and let him know. Because that's his job. He is there to help you know, normalize and, and get things on the right track. So, so if you are experiencing that, um, I don't remember who asked that question, but yes, please call him and he will, you know, he'll, he's very good at responding. He's very uh, good at being there present. And if it's not him, somebody that works with him will be there. You're Adam's muted. Of course I'm muted. Uh, I said, thank you so much, Senator. Uh, and hopefully myself and the mayor, Commissioner Lazaro can um, be supportive here through Hallandale Beach for very important legislation that you will be bringing forward. Um, I will, uh, thank you again. I know you have to go, um, but hopefully Representative Rabina can fill you in uh, and let me get, let's get to the uh, other questions. Senator, thank you again. Take care. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Next question. Is that is it legal for self-managed associations to have an office manager that does not have an LCAM license? Hmm. That's a very simple question. Yes. If they're self-managed, they're self-managed. They don't need anybody with a license, which is a big problem nowadays. God love volunteers, but unfortunately, they don't they can't keep up with all the requirements. And, and that's I'm not saying that there aren't some. The majority of people that are professionals that may have a background and that are accountants, that are attorneys, do a great job. But on the on basically in the average, it's not a good idea. So that's a problem. That's another thing. That's another thing that's been discussed as well. And obviously, I, it should go to mention that you know it, we're talking about bad apples, but the most the majority are good apples. But again, it, it even goes back to the expertise. You might be an expertise, and you might be from New York, and the, you don't know the laws or you don't know the statutes. And and the cam that cam issue has come up, came up particularly in smaller condos. Um, that really don't have um, a professional manager, especially when it comes to construction, it comes to certain things and, you know, they, they're well intended, but certainly we're talking about million dollar projects and some of those discussions of requirements that have come up. So. Which, which commissioner brings me up and I'll stay as long as you want, if you want to awesome. go past, because I, I, awesome. I had to get off early last time, but we can talk. Awesome. But mm -hmm. I don't want the evening to go by since we have Danielle Blake here with us and Adam mm -hmm. from the other realtors group. 
I want to talk about some other things because the senator spoke about this condo fraud task force bill, but I'm on, on three different committees, including the county that's looking at the 25 year. They're looking at changing 40 years to 25, starting it at 25, having it done by 30. But I also have a list of things that I think realtors are very much involved in. And, and if I may just take two minutes and then we'll revert back to the questions because I don't want the, the people in real estate to drop off. One of the things that's huge, and I'm working this with another representative, is the issue of reserves and reserve studies. Let's talk about this, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep using the Champagne Towers as an example. If they would have had all the money they needed, if they would have had reserves, if they would have done what they did, which is a mismanagement problem, all kinds of stuff, that would not have happened. That tragedy did not have to happen, okay? I tell everybody, I've been interviewed from every nation nationwide and local, didn't have to happen. So here's one of the things that's coming. Reserve studies, for those that don't know what that is, it's a, a study, you call it a reserve calculation that is going to, I believe, be made mandatory. Mandatory, no more, ah, well, we'll get to it. Why? Because a building deserves to know where they stand and how much life is left on the roof and on the structure and on the pool and on the elevators. And so that'll help them plan accordingly to what they need. But here's the key one, reserves. Almost 90, Danielle, jump in. I'd say over 90% of condos in Florida waive the ability to put in, to have reserves. They're hurting themselves. And you got to understand the human side of it. I understand. I don't want to add another three, $400 a month to my, uh, my maintenance payment per se. However, that's foolish because here's what happens. You may not, what's gonna happen is I believe this year you're gonna see a mandate where they're no longer able to waive completely the reserves. What's yet to be seen is how much will be the minimum requirement. Will it be 10%? I've heard as much as 25. This is where I leave it to the lawmakers, the senators, the representatives to battle this out and decide, but they must have reserves. You gotta have reserves, especially with the pressure coming from the county here, they're looking at roofs like they never have before. They're looking at every, what they call deferred maintenance situation. There better be some money in those reserves. And then finally, here's the thing, on new buildings, one of the biggest flaws is when a developer builds a new building, there he has to leave, this is, I think is gonna be a mandate, a mandatory reserve in that building for at least five years. Let me, let, me, let me explain to you what we mean by that. That means that if you bought into a brand new building, since we don't know what the developer did and the problems can start showing up within a year, normally within two or three years, they leave a lump sum that is decided by a reserve study on what would it, what would it cost if any of the parts in the building were bad. They leave it in a lump sum that he doesn't get it back till after five years, but it's there for the use of who? the board if there is a flaw with that building. So they need to, it's gotta be a mandatory, you know, on the turnover, mandatory fund left by the developer so that these new buildings don't fall into a situation where, my God, we gotta sue the guy, we gotta sue the developer, none of that. That's, that's key, I wanted to talk about that. And then of course, real quick, there's gonna be some issues on insurance. Get ready. The insurance issue yep. is going to be big. They're starting to already send letters. They want to drop mm -hmm. uh, buildings. They want proof of the certifications. They want additional proof of certifications. They're going to ask for mandatory, what some type of mandatory reserve proof, and finally a calculation. Yep. And then finally, certification. I love board members. I created the law to make sure that people at least had to take a course so that they knew what they were doing. Of course, the lobbying group stuck in the part where they can sign an affidavit, and that's been the loophole. That's a joke. Yeah. That needs to be yeah. removed. That is a joke, and it's abuse. I've seen property managers and attorneys prepare an affidavit and tell the board, don't worry about it. Just sign here that you read 718. That's doing a disservice to the building. You know what we're going to see? And this is going to come with this type of opposition. Oh, if you do that, nobody will want to be a volunteer. Well, you know what? I'm tired of hearing that. This is a very serious commitment that you make to be on a board of directors. As you can see, lives are at stake. Money travels through there. People's investments. And of course, as I said, I'm repeating myself, people's lives. So I think that we're going to try to push 
to remove it and create some type of all day course where at least you do know something so that the horse is not, you know, in a, you don't put the cart before the horse because what's happening in a lot of situations, the property managers and the attorneys are guiding the board members. And I'm gonna leave it there because I told you I'd had a couple little things before the realtors got off. Let's answer questions, but I'm giving you a little bit of insight of what's coming down the pipeline. And at the county commission in Miami-Dade County, which I'm on their blue ribbon committee, they're talking about changing the 40 year to 30, but you got to start it at the 25th year because it takes four or five years before they get the funding yeah. and get it done. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Take questions. All right, let's go. Thank you. Let's let me scroll up so I can be fair to everyone. Give me one moment. We also have questions regarding um, receivership. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Might have to connect you with some uh, residents um, at the end of this, but let me scroll up so that I'm fair. Um, DBPR has been powerless for the last 10 years. That's what, true. What about <laughs> reserves to be mandatory starting next year? I think- There you go. Yeah, you touched on that. Exactly, DVPR useless and ombudsman could not help at all. <laughs> He's tied, uh, his hands are tied, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Moving right along. Is it legal for, okay, sorry, I already covered that. Um, please comment address on the channel 10 report regarding the hemispheres. <laughs> Bonnie, we will at the end, we, we covered it last week. We covered it at the commission meeting and we will certainly cover it at the end of the meeting. Um, I don't quite understand what, oh, I'm sorry, that's where. What resources are available for small condo buildings to find management that is competent and cost-effective? So many we have interviewed are outrageously priced and we find it difficult to find reliable information regarding them. I asked the same question regarding inspection companies for 40-year inspection, et cetera. If any of you have questions, please type them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, not Isn't there for that one, isn't there an association for CAM management? As a matter of fact, I believe one of the commissioners from Weston is, um, she might be vice president of the organization. I can get that to you, Annabelle. Well, there's a lady by yeah. the name of Patricia Rogers. Yeah. That is actually works with Gold Coast Schools. She's the one that teaches these CAMs that are coming out right. like, uh, you know, it's ridiculous how easy someone in Florida can get a CAM license. And that's a problem. So you'll, you'll address it. And remember, the, the, the senator only explained briefly the meat of the bill of the fraud committee and what the ombudsman's responsibilities will do. One of the things that included is in that bill is that the ombudsman will also be able to screen for the first time ever, if this law goes through, the complaints on CAMs so that I can actually see a CAM license pulled for the first time ever in Florida. You, if you want to check how many times DBPR has pulled a CAM license, you'll be surprised. These people, unfortunately, they are excellent CAMs. And I'm not saying because you're new, you don't know what you're doing, but you should see the stuff that goes on with some of these CAMs. And it's almost impossible to remove a license of a bad CAM. This will be addressed. So going to her question, finding a good company, you know, unfortunately, that takes a lot of what you call calls and asking people for references. And I also like to say that it's good to have a CAM, not only with just a, a state license, but you know, CAM, some of them have what they call a national license. They have a CAM where they can practice community association management in the United States. That's a whole nother level of education and stuff that is required. That is how I think that you go about it. But unfortunately, it's, a, it's basically the, the luck of the draw if you don't check for references on how they've been with other communities. That's the best advice I can give. Mm -hmm. Is there not a possibility that the board uh, to will embezzle the reserve funds? Yes, of course. So what do we do with that? This is why we got this law coming up to create the condo fraud task force. Mm -hmm. And so those that are hearing is, you know what this is like, we're modeling. If you ever watched the news and seen where somebody some business got arrested for Medicare fraud or Medicaid fraud where they show up police officers with badges, they walk in, they confiscate computers, the files go out. That's what we're talking about, this fraud task force. That alone, people will understand. Our day, if you're in that, that shenanigan world, 
that nonsense is going to stop when they realize, oh, my God, they're going to show up at my door and they're going to arrest me. Arrest power, subpoena power. They will get those documents that no one ever likes to turn over when you ask for them. So they're going to come in and take care of it. But is there fraud? Yes. That's why we want not at the cost of the building, but have this group, which is paid through the condo trust fund, have auditors. Because you know what happens a lot of times if you suspect that money has been um, taken by board members, you know that they have to go out and hire somebody to do an audit themselves. Do you know what an audit costs an association just to find out if they're being ripped off by a property manager? They can't afford it, uh, Commissioner Mayor. So let the state put the resources into doing those, uh, those type of audits for you if they find that you guys have probable cause. Yeah. May, may I may I touch on this topic just briefly? Sure. And I, I want to say, and, and in my experience, you know, when, when people go out with these big, go for these big assessments, and we've talked to this, and I wanted to hear when the representative hear it, um, they'll do a 20% inspection of the building. Um, we debated that yesterday as well. And, and I've heard that, well, we only look at five balconies rather than 80 balconies. And many times what happens is the condos are basing their assessments on this. So a lot of people think, well, I was told the assessment's going to be that. And then they end up going in and starting construction and have change orders. So a lot of people believe that to be fraud, but that's just a function of how they're going out for the RFP for construction and how they're presenting the inspection. So, um, you know, that goes back to education as well. But I just wanted to touch on that because a lot of um, residents that are in these condos don't understand that. And they think, well, you know, we passed this assessment for $2 million and they're coming back again for another million. But um, you might want to elaborate on that a bit, but it doesn't mean there's fraud. It just means that possibly they didn't have the proper engineering study or they didn't have a proper, a proper project manager or a third party validation to even watch what was happening. So, right? Well, Madam Mayor, oh, yes. is that yeah, right? Mayor, <laughs> yeah, you and the, and the commissioner, both Michelle and Annabelle, understand that because you've seen what a city goes through to put out an RFP mm -hmm. and there has to be a clear scope of work. Right. What happens in these condos by board members that really at times don't know what they're doing, but guess who does and should fix that is the property managers and, mm -hmm. and the, the attorneys know they need to give exactly. proper legal advice. They don't do it. But here's how this works. No bid should ever go out when you just tell people, okay, come back and give me a roofing bid or give me a painting bid or give me an right. asphalt bid. Somebody needs to hire a professional and a project manager and a scope of work has to be done so that when you put out that RFP, that comes back apples to apples. And in the law that I wrote, which no one follows, those bids are supposed to come back sealed, sealed and not opened by the property management company. No one, because that leads to manipulation or mm -hmm. the accusation that, that you manipulate. Oh, you gave it to this guy. Those things should come in sealed. There should be an open meeting of the association. All the bids should be opened up at that time so that everyone sees what, what they're offering. And it should be apples to apples. But finally, those groups should be invited to do a presentation. Hi, we're John Doe Painters. This is what we do, 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 do in here. But what's happening is that doesn't, that's not really what's happening nowadays. And there's also the manipulation of claiming that it's an emergency a project so that bypassed the, the the ability to need to get three three proposals there's so much fraud but again i'm going to keep going back to the to the senator's bill condo fraud these people are going to know the game they're going to know what's going on and they're going to come out and they're going to look at it because at the end of the day one thing that's happening all over is that you know this famous word called kickbacks there are people that are getting money not in all cases. I don't want right. the majority of the boards are excellent, honest people right. that are there to protect the integrity of their building. They know right. their job. But there is that element that says, "Whoa, there's money to be made here. All of that, hopefully, every bit of it will be addressed by a fraud. What a concept. Huh? Mayor, what you did in your city, we're going to have one group set to do it for everyone yeah. at no cost. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, um, while the bill does, does not pass, how can condo residents report potential frauds? 
I'm assuming the question is if the bill does not pass, how can uh, residents report potential frauds? Can I just say that I think the bill is going to pass and I think it's going to pass with no problem. <laughs> Too many bells ringing for it. Yeah. Too many. And no, you know what it's got? It's got bipartisan support. This is not for Democrats. This is not for Republicans. And I think that everyone with common sense realizes you can have all the laws in the world, but where's the enforcement side? And I think we all agree DBPR is a toothless paper pushing. And I have no problem telling the secretary that because I dealt with that nonsense for years. This element is going to be important. But to answer your question, Annabelle, unfortunately, it's, gonna, it's got a 99%, especially when the governor and everyone else is making this a priority. Nobody wants any more fraud to be committed. But let's always give it that 1%. If it were not to happen, not to pass, you'd be back to the old way. You'd have to call your local police department, deal with a detective if they have an economic crimes unit like you guys do, You'd have to go sell it to them and see if they see some type of fraud. And if they do, they've got to assign manpower to try to investigate it. And if they find something, then they have to take it to the state attorney. Did you notice all those steps? Well, the main thing is try to tell a local police department to prioritize a condo potential fraud over all the other issues that they deal yeah. with. It's impossible. That's why we want to dedicate a group that does nothing and only association fraud. There's your answer. Okay, special assessments are prone to embezzlement via creative financial processes. Yes. Uh, George, what about realtor fraud? That, that'll, we can cover that another time. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, one of our buildings is three years behind or in their 40 year inspection. Uh, we, will, we will cover that as well. I think that's Alan. Um, how can condos make sure that board members are condo owners when most units are owned by LLCs? Hmm. I, I didn't understand that question. What was that again? How can condos uh, make, make sure that board members are condo owners when most of the units are owned by LLCs? Well, time out. Remember, you got to read the documents because there yeah. are some condos where you don't have to be an owner. You can be a renter. You, there's, it's strange. You got to read those doc, that doc, those documents that you got mm -hmm. when you close are the Bible. Read them. Get to know them like your best friend. Because I have condos where renters right now are actually part of the board of directors. So again, you you have to be careful. And if they're LLCs, as long who's the president of, of, of the corporation, who's the guy in charge, they there's nothing that says in statute that an LLC, it won't be under the LLC, it'll be under John Doe, owner of the LLC, that if he, by the docs, he's an owner or renter and he's allowed to be on the board, he can be on the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, will this recording be available on the city of Hallandale Beach website? We'll have to, yes. <laughs> that was yes. I heard that was yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> My husband just walked in. Uh, Mayor, can you take over, read over some of the questions until the oh, doctor? Okay. Um, oh my God, now I got to scroll down. Hold on, or scroll up, I should say. Okay, how are you coming? That's not how condos make sure board members are not condo. Owners. Well, yes. Um, what about realtor board of directors embezzlement? You said you'd take that later. Um, and... I think that's it. Otherwise you end up, okay. This is one about receivership and we actually have a condo in receivership here in Hallandale. I don't know we, if we, we have any more, but I know we have one. We need we to can talk about that. Information. Otherwise you end up in receivership to, to be in our case, so costly. And still after three years, haven't seen major repairs. And I brought this up as well because it does delay the impact of repairing these structures. So go ahead if you want but to- before I, jump into, before I jump into the receivership on what their purpose is, what they have to do. And in some cases, how do you remove them and take control of your building again? Right. I'll discuss it. Oh, but right. since we have the realtors on here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak because Danielle's here and Adam, I think is still on here somewhere. Mm -hmm. there, there he is. Guys, the only complaint that I get a lot of times nowadays from, from um, owners and that bought a unit uh, and so forth is this is the only gripe that I've heard and I'll let the realtors jump in on it, is that at the time of the closing, you know that a realtor has to do what they call disclosure. They do let, have to let these communities know, hey, do you know that you're buying into an association? 
hey, do you know that this has not only a regular association, but it also has a master? That's a big problem. A lot of people are told, yeah, you have an association, but they don't realize they have a master and they have to pay both. They have to pay a maintenance fee for the regular association and one for the master. A lot of times they're not even told what I put in the statute, which is if there's lawsuits pending, if there's major work coming up, disclosure, you need to be told by your realtor what is happening. Danielle, nothing personal. There's always a bunch of bad apples in, in, in every group, as you guys have seen it. But there are some realtors that are not going to lose their commission for any reason. And then what they do is they don't disclose these things. You know how people find out? When they get a violation from us or when they get a letter that you haven't paid your master association or that they did something, where is the disclosure? I think that's always going to be a priority for the Realtors Association to make sure that all licensed realtors in Florida are doing disclosure. Because when you don't do disclosure, you basically are doing a disservice. And, and I've been told you can actually sue, an, uh, uh, you can file a lawsuit against a realtor if they don't disclose what you just got yourself into. Guys, Danielle, Adam, you guys want to touch on that? That's about the only thing that I'm hearing that people complain. Sure, I will take it. I don't disagree with you on the disclosure <laughs> realtors is coming out. Danielle, with I was on delete. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, have, oh, sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> no, go ahead. But it's a tough point. issue. And th that's why I'll let you leave with it. <laughs> but. Okay. It has been a tough first, issue Adam? for the realtors. So, yeah, Adam. Okay, I mean, Danielle, go ahead, please. Danielle, go, go ahead. ahead, Danielle. Okay. So, Florida Realtors is coming out with a new condo rider based on what happened in Surfside. They're looking at, you know, there's okay. a three day period, for example, to review the documents. Is that long enough? Is there things that we're going to need to change I agree. At, the, at the state level? Don't say realtors have to disclose because realtors don't know. We didn't leave, we did not live in the building. We don't know what the meetings are like. It is the seller that has to disclose. And so we ask those questions of the seller. The seller has to provide us that information. That's why we're so excited with the Hollandale Beach model, because getting access, like you just said, read the documents, make it your Bible, have them memorized. If you don't have access to those documents, you're not going to be able to know those things. You know, there's a couple of things I'll point out, and I know it kind of gets into detail here, but We've consistently said at the point where you're entitled to those documents, you have to be in a contract already in accordance with state law. For us, right. that's too late. You really should have access at the beginning of this because, you know, go. what if I have a 70 pound dog and I want to move into the, the unit and it's prohibited? I don't want to be in a contract with a, a seller to find out that I can't move in with my dog. I Good should point. know that ahead of time. That's exactly what your ordinance does in the city mm -hmm. is to say, these are the rules and regs. These are the condo docs. These are the declarations. Then I can read through it before I make that offer. That's what's key in this. I can read it before I make that offer and know if that's the right place for me to reside. Now, having said that, that same requirement does not exist for homeowner associations. Correct. And it's very difficult to find those docs. The, and, and again, going back to condos, the onus is on the seller to provide it. And it is statutorily required that seller has to provide the documents at seller's expense. In a homeowner association, Chapter 720, the, the onus is on the buyer to go and find those documents through public record. If they're not able to find it through public record, they have to go and find it from the developer. So the case that we recently had, it was in Broward County, and she was researching. It was platted in the 1960s. She couldn't find it in public record because your public records only go back to 1977 on the website. And so... Um, she was you know, trying to find the bylaws. The developer is long gone. What do you do in this scenario? What's the mm -hmm. logical step? I'm gonna ask the seller, right? Yeah. I'm the buyer's agent. So I asked the seller, can you please provide me the condo docs for, the, for my buyer? And the answer back from the seller's agent was, I do not legally have to disclose this information. That has to be changed. She is absolutely correct under state law, unfortunately. Yep. But that's a change that's needed. And, and you need more time. I got a list. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm on <laughs> well, I'm just saying that because before we go into receivership, people that put that blame on realtors need to understand you're strapped by, by, Limited by law. information. Yeah. So you guys have to, and you guys are going to be trying to change this this year also yeah. on your own. That's another one of your right. issues. Well, folks, right. there you get it. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. one of the things I wanted you to put out there because I know that a lot of people complain about it. And 
that done, let's jump to receiverships. Do you all know that receiverships are Can appointed? I'm sorry, Adam, go ahead. Just one last thing on that. I know Danielle has been talking about it and she's right. That's why I'm quiet about it. It's that all of this stuff we've been talking about, we've been talking about for years and it's not about over-regulation. It's not about the finances. It's really about, I mean, I hate to say it, but say it. You know, we were on a private conversation with Marty Care. He's not gonna like if I say this, but so I'll modify it when buildings fall. I mean, we're here. And it's not just the, the safety of it, it's the, the regulation of it. It's everything you guys have been discussing. Mm -hmm. And you guys were ahead of the game. Adam, you're being too nice with your words. Well, really. we need to be sometimes. <laughs> you know and, why? And because you know what happens here? And I'm going to use the words since I am no longer. Kind of sir. Well, go ahead, because I'm going to tell you what I say. Go ahead. Well, that's all I had to say. But go ahead, sir. Here's the thing. What's happening is notice the government, and we're going to take the blame. Those who have been elected to positions. Government wasn't doing it and wasn't doing anything. It takes a tragedy to get a knee-jerk reaction from government. Notice all of a sudden we even got the federal government on our president here. We got the state involved. We got the counties, and we got the municipalities. Adam, you, I can say it, you don't have to. This is what happens. But now all of a sudden they <laughs> well, want to go and check it. <laughs> That, that's what you're trying to say, and you're absolutely Danielle, right. Danielle, are you good with that? <laughs> well, we're he's not because, now, right, you know why they don't take it personally? Because they're different. They're trying to make changes, and they're trying to be proactive. But this mm -hmm. is not what happens in my Miami-Dade County. I've seen more pressure put on, on buildings in Miami-Dade County in the past couple of months than they've done in the past 10 years. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they're getting pushback from the elected officials. And let me tell you what they tell them. We don't ever want to be embarrassed like this again. You need ever. to, you need to straighten this mess out. Well, it's more than being embarrassed. It's losing your life, and that's the main thing. We're trying to prevent the and loss of lives. That's why we've been here. So, so, but I can say it. I appreciate your politically correctness. I'm not wanting. To well, I'm trying to be way. nice, but um, Danielle and I sometimes, you know, it's great. I'm going to be honest. Danielle and I have some great private conversations, and then we negotiate about the, the, the association politics of it, which I can't get <laughs> blah, blah, blah. We can laugh about it, but no, well, the no, the that's day, the problem. we're here, we're here. And um, it, it's a great issue because it's not a great issue. Yeah. My new quote is this isn't about the next vote. This is about um, the Mayor Cooper. Uh, that's my quote. I'll keep saying yeah. it's about popularity. Yeah, it's really not. I mean, who would imagine if you're from New York, New Jersey, you know, you don't think about this stuff. And then just people died in an overnight crash of their apartment building. Well, and it's that awful. unfortunately is and, the way that a lot of I really believe. And then if it brings the Miami and the the Broward or whatever realtors together, we're here. There we, but amen. I think we need to solve this issue. We do. Not that we will, but we but we will somehow come. Well, it's we're all at the, right. We're all at the table, and that's the main thing. That for the first time, let's let's. I'm going to finish with yes. the receivership. But being on a positive note, I I'm loving that for the first time I got city with things like what you guys are doing in Hollandale Beach, thinking outside the box. You got county, you got state, and guess what? Even the feds have stepped up because remember, folks. Yes. There's one thing we haven't spoken about, which is where is this money going to come from if they start forcing all the deferred maintenance on all the buildings? You know how many buildings need millions of dollars and banks are not willing to loan them money at this time to deal with deferred maintenance? Well, guess what? The, the federal government decided to help. They're going to put their money where their mouth is. I've already reached out to Congresswoman... Um, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and our congressional group from here. And I said, you guys are going to put your money where your mouth is. You're going to need to create at the federal level, some type of low interest uh, um, loan or some type mm -hmm. of grants to help these buildings catch up with all the stuff that's coming at them as a result of this knee jerk reaction. Because remember at the end of the day, money has to be found to do mm -hmm. all this deferred maintenance. And you know what? There isn't a citizen here. I don't care what how much retirement they get or Social Security. They're not going to be able to, to pay 
what's coming at them. That said, let me finish the last thing. The receivers. Uh, Annabelle, you had a comment? Yeah, so I, I, I really want to get to some of these questions that have to do with receivership because they waited mm -hmm. patiently last week. So may I, may I read these questions to you? Um, you it's from one specific building. I'm not going to call uh, the building publicly, um, but let me, let me go through the questions and then perhaps you can touch on and all of it together and then maybe give your contact information sure. afterwards and see if you can help, help this, um, these lovely residents. So we live at blah, 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 a 45 unit condo in Hallandale that due to mismanagement, lack of transparency and communication has sadly and economically hurtfully been under receivership since August 20th, 2018. As of August 2020, after two years of receivership, more than $418,625 had been paid in assessment without seeing much needed and significant repairs, pipes, water towers, external wall cracks, etc. It seems that most of the money has gone to pay for receivership fees and lawyer fees associated Correct. to receivership. We have not received any financial information. I've requested in many occasions for a detailed report, nothing received as of today. Hang on one, one, one more minute, um, mm -hmm. Representative. We are not a wealthy community. Pandemic has hit us hard as to most world citizens. Despite this last year, 2020, an additional $20,000 special assessment was requested by the receiver in order to get a $1,700 loan. The loan was approved. I believe the money was received in February, 2021. Still no major repairs uh, have been done. Most of my questions are, how can we get out of the receivership? How can, the, how can we owners decide the priorities to use the money for? Why can, can we not get the detailed financial information? And why can we not get the expected reports that the receiver has to present quarterly to the judge court? I have also yep. received from the same building inquiries on how they um, how to get in touch with you and how you can help them. So now that I've given you the scenario, please. And, and, and I thank you for the questions. Great questions. And give them my number because it's very detailed. And can we you don't give out your number. Can you give out your number here? Yeah, my number is I'll give you my personal cell since people are willing to be on these meetings you can have my personal cell it's area code 305 and the number is 343-0776 they can call me they can come to our offices we actually you know we'll help them with that and 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 answer all their questions which I think is the biggest concern how do we get out of this first and foremost let's say that receiverships is something that I don't like but there is a need for them why? Because this is what happens when an association has been run to the ground. They don't need, some associations can't even get people to want to be board members. So somebody petitions the court, all it takes is one owner, boom, a judge assigns a receiver, you're off and running. This individual, you said it right, the majority of the money is being spent on his fees and on attorney's fees. And, and basically, remember what a receiver does? He takes control. He becomes board. He becomes a property manager. And he hires an attorney, which he also, they bill you for that also, to, to guide him. So you lose full control of your community. I have helped many communities in Dade County that fell into receivership because they made a mistake. They didn't know what a receivership was when they realized, same thing. Oh, my God, all my money's going to pay its fees. We have no accountability. It was a mess. What you got to do, unfortunately, since it was appointed through a judge, you have to go <laughs> and hire an attorney to get him to get the receiver removed. So it's a civil process now. You got to go through the courts because he's not going to act like a board that has to give you documents. You got to go to a judge and say, your honor. And here's how we've removed receivers. I've had a group of people that realized what a mistake it was that they allowed a receiver to get into the community uh, where it was a bad receiver. Because again, I tell you, there are good receivers and they do lift these communities out of the hole that they're in and then they turn it back. But in this case, a whole group gets together, they hire an attorney, they petition the judge and say, Your Honor, we want it. We're, we got people that are ready to be on this board. We've got a, 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 a property manager ready to go. We've got an attorney. We're asking you to remove the receiver. And most of the time, most of the time, the judge will side with the owners and go ahead and tell the receiver, okay, you've got 30 days to bring it to close or start shutting it down. I am going to return the community back to the 
um, to the association, meaning the owners. That's where it needs to be, folks. It needs to be back in your hands. I think you know why. The cost that they're paying this guy or woman or whoever it may be, whoever the, the receiver is. And what, what, what I hate about it is the lack of accountability. That's what bothers me the most. They don't tell you what they're spending money on. However, you do know that it's going mostly to pay for his salary. And here's the other thing. You know, he can hire whoever he wants and assess you whatever he wants in the name of trying to bring back what they call compliance to the building, to settle code violations with the city, to settle lawsuits. They have full power. You talk about a dictatorship, that's what a, re that's what a receivership becomes, a dictatorship. But again, I want to be clear, very needed in some times, but in my opinion, you need to find a way to get them out of there and take control. We will explain to these people when they call me how they go about it, how they get together, and how they petition the courts. And there's a string of attorneys that will help and get involved with these individuals to help them in that situation. Questions? Any other questions you got on that? Yeah, so I, so I, I think with the specific building, um, is it possible that the receiver had um, a past criminal history that the courts would appoint someone with a past criminal history? Is that possible? Very, that's anything in South Florida is possible. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that's the honest truth. That's how I put it out there because I've seen people that would committed Medicaid and Medicare fraud and nowadays are cams. I'm going to leave it there. But in normal, it should not be because these people are screened. It's normally, it was not normal. It's a judge who will appoint them. So the chances of that are very slim. But again, there is always a possibility, Annabelle. I can't tell you what the background is. There's people that have been a sponge. They may have gotten a cam license. They may have a relationship with a judge and the judge appointed them to be a receiver. There's an answer to your question. Yeah, so um, so to to the residents with this specific, or the question specific to this building, you know who you are, I would highly recommend, uh, but please don't have 20 of your residents contact uh, Julio. No. Yeah, please. Get one person, <laughs> get one person that's well versed, well spoken, that knows what's going on. And please get to the facts to, you know, because when I've spent time with you, some of your neighbors, you've taken three hours of my time talking about everything else except the facts. So, you know, Julio is, is doing us a commission and, a, a, you know, a, a courtesy yeah. um, to all of you and his relationship with the mayor and myself and Commissioner Lazarus. So please be respectful of his time and just get to the facts and pick one or two people to call him. Um, if you need, um, Claudia is asking, how can we contact lawyers to remove receiver? I think that you really need to have someone um, speak with Mr. Um, with Julio. We'll guide him. Um, we yeah. will guide them. Yeah, Claudia, you can just get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with you. Commissioner, yes. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but you're right. We have members that they'll, they'll text forever. And then I know I'm over texting sometimes, but it, it's because you have 100 people texting. So if we can condense it, because yeah. and, and you, by the way, I you're the one that got it. elected to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and we did, but our time, remember our time is very limited because our- No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's no, just, so if they're texting us and then you <laughs> cipher through it, but you guys are doing a great job. I'm well, probably not am communicating that properly, but Danielle, <laughs> save me but, on this. But no, that's she, I'm sure she gets a hundred texts a day from condo people, blah, blah, blah. But, hey, Julio, I had a question for you. Sure. Uh, one of the recommendations was to keep the reserve funds in an escrow account instead mm -hmm. of in the bank that's accessible by board members or by CAMs. What are your thoughts on that? I, I agree because unfortunately, I don't know if you know, by law, certain accounts are, can't, cannot be interest bearing. So that said, yes, I'm, 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 I'm totally in favor of something like that. Uh, the deal is we need to get this in, in a legislative form and maybe set some guidelines because if you leave it to the interpretation of every community, Danielle, you know what happens, right? It, it's it, Everybody's all over the place. This is why we need to be specific in legislation how that's done. But yes, I have. I think that's a, that's a great idea. 
And by the way, again, I want to thank the realtors and because you guys are advocating. At the end of the day, you know, everyone on this site that's been speaking has a, a, a purpose to try to help the community. And I want to put this out there. It's not that I wouldn't want to speak to a group of 30, but have you tried to get a decision when you talk to 30 people at one time? It's almost impossible. You let you, you get one or two, let them bring the ideas for everyone forward, because at the end of the day, there's not enough of us with enough time to take everyone on. And by the way, this thing is huge. So people are coming out of the woodwork right now with condo issues. So we're overwhelmed even more than what we normally are. So any other questions? So we have quite a few questions. It's 810. I don't know that we can keep going with the questions tonight. Um, I do have, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Alfie, Alfie's, my dog's cheering us on in the background. Alfie, stop. He wants uh, attention. <laughs> he's, he's cheering us on. I apologize. Um, so we do have another meeting next week and then the following week. Next week, uh, I have attorney Eric Glazier. So you know Eric? Very good attorney, very good so, attorney. I don't know if you would be amenable to joining in again next week or the following week. I, I know you've given so much of your time, but there's so many questions and just, you know, not a lot of time to, to get to all of them. So I don't know if you'd be amenable to, to joining us again next week. Absolutely. And I've worked with Eric on many panels and actually have done his show. He's got a great show called Condo Craze and HOAs that I believe airs on Sundays. I've been a part of that group. You guys need to listen to him. This guy knows his stuff and can guide you in the right direction. Um, besides that, like I said, we seem to see, seem to be able to see eye to eye, even though this is an attorney's perspective, he understands what's right for the unit owners. Yeah, so, so, yeah. He'll, so he'll be on next week. If we could have you join us back next week would be uh, really, really wonderful and helpful. Um, I will send out another email for next week. And if it's okay with you, I'll put your um, email or contact information. I am going to send this to the residents because there seems a lot of, to be a lot of interest to speak with you. Again, if there are several of you, I know there's one um, association, a, a building that there's a meeting tonight, so they couldn't attend, but they're waiting for the recording. There's about 15 of them uh, that were with us last week. So, um, but what I'll say is I, I see some new uh, residents on, which really makes me happy. I think we have one or two from Hollywood as well. Um, but what I will say is, please, 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 let me reiterate, don't have 15 people call from your building. Pick one, the best speaker you have to contact um, Mr. Rabina, and I will put you uh, in touch with him as well. We will get to your questions. Um, Julia, it was really important that we could try to work out or have maybe a half hour conversation with our HOA um, members and perhaps um, I don't know what help you could offer them, but I, I feel like some of them feel really desperate for help and I, I don't have a lot that I can offer them. Um, so, you know, if, that, if we could uh, at some point just have, uh, you know, a very short meeting just for our HOA neighbors, I would really appreciate it. So we'll be back on next week, 630. Mayor, Commissioner, don't go anywhere yet, please, because I want to address some of the questions and inquiries regarding hemispheres. I don't want anyone to think that we, uh, we don't want to address that. But I really, really want to thank Danielle Blake and, um, and Adam from the Broward Realtor Association. Senator's not here with us and Marty Care. Um, and I, and I just want to address my, you know, residents and, and Mayor Cooper and, and Commissioner Lazaro, the ordinance in Bay Harbor Islands did not get a second. Oh, wow. I, look, they, they don't understand. I, I, want to, I won't elaborate. I, I, I'm not surprised. I won't elaborate too much, but um, did not get a second. So I just want to say I'm really proud of our city uh, that we um, did this before the tragedy and we did this last year and of course the first um uh portion of it was uh, adopted last year on june of 2020 we've had a couple of amendments this year but really we should be very very proud of our city and very proud of us as a commission that we came together and we got this ordinance passed again you know there were a lot of residents that were part of this and julio this ordinance the language for it i would have never had 
the support were it, were it not for for your time that that you spent and the language you know that you offered our city attorney so you know kudos to us as a commission in Helen Del Beach we are the first in the state I don't want to exaggerate and stay in the country because I'm not sure I'm still doing research but I'll take the first in the state I was hoping Bay Harbor would be the second um, but that's okay I know uh, Dade County Dade County but Miami Dade County has uh, gotten the first draft back from the attorney's office and we made some changes to it and it should be released that's in the next week or so so we'll have first reading they don't meet in August so the first opportunity we have will be in September but we're pushing for that and it would cover Bay Harbor because it's going to be unincorporated and there we incorporated go. and it's going to be the master repository for all the information Beautiful. instead of having it spread out in different municipalities so thank you for starting this because you know it, it's catching on definitely and going to other places so kudos to you guys again thank commissioner you. if i may thank you guys for being the ones who took the first step you got to remember you want to be a leader you don't want to follow and unfortunately yeah. these cities are not being proactive I thank the county. The county's going to put them under their spot. But before I hang up, I want to continue to tell you, do more. Because these are, especially in your community, how many people live in these condominiums? Over 200 it, unit condominiums. They, and that's why it's, it's, it impacts your everyday reason of existence as elected elected body to, to, to protect these people. And then finally, I'd like to say that we need to get behind the realtors legislation. You heard some of the things they're doing, but more importantly, I'll leave with this. Please get behind Senator Anna Maria's bill, this fraud, ladies and gentlemen that are on this meeting. If you didn't, we, we talked about a lot of things. I hope you remember one thing, at least when we hang up tonight, get behind this bill. It's not a bill number yet. It's still in bill drafting, but start talking it up to people that there is uh, uh, a, a condominium fraud task force coming and this will be a savior to everyone so i hope that everyone will start talking about that on that note i'll let you guys Leo, hold, on, hold on one second i i see the commissioner lazaro muted herself i was not sure if she wanted to say commissioner did you want to say oh. something i'm or? sorry if i missed anything because i had to take a call so i don't know if i missed anything if you had called on me and i you thought maybe i wasn't listening hmm. no i just i i was giving kudos to the commission for okay. you were in it. Yeah. Sure. No, but don't go anywhere because um, hopefully uh, we can talk about hemispheres and I know some people ask questions. I don't want okay. any. I do have to make one fast call, but I am coming back. Okay. okay. All, right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Julio, thank you very, 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 you. very much. So uh, nice to see everybody. Mayor, pleasure. I'll be I'll calling call you. Always... I I'm going to be calling you to Please. cross lines with the uh, the county task force and see what direction you're going in, if you don't mind. Okay. We'll keep, we'll keep Thank in the you, loop. Thank Julio. you. Thank okay. you. You guys have a good night, everybody. Thanks, okay. Julio. See you, Danielle. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Mir, um, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Danielle, you're a rock star. Thank you so, 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 so much. I really appreciate it. I don't know if Adam's still on, but um, I look forward to continuing to work with Adam um, with the Broward and Palm Beach, Port St. Lucie, it's a mouthful, Realtor Association, um, but um, we'll, we'll talk some more. Unfortunately, it didn't pass in Bay Harbor, but that's okay. The county will pass it and it's all, you know, a lot of it is your, your work and, uh, you know, I really, really appreciate it. So we're going to go right into a discussion about the hemispheres because I think there are some residents from the hemispheres on here and I don't want anyone to think that we are uh, shying away or, or not being transparent. So I've, I've gotten a lot of time to speak today. I'm happy to speak on it, but you know, Mayor, if we can give Commissioner Lazaro a few minutes to speak and then, um, you know, you can take it away. Commissioner, do you want to go first? Do you want the mayor to go first? I don't, it doesn't matter to me. No, I don't have any is is issue in going first, but thank you. I'm happy to listen. Oh, you if have anybody to. has if anybody has a question for me directly, I'm happy to answer. But at this moment, I have nothing. Oh, okay. Well, it's not directly at you. It's it's to us as commission regarding oh, okay. regarding the regarding the hemispheres. And okay. mm -hmm. I thought you know I saw that there was another report that came out on WLRN. Um. So following the commission meeting we had last week and then the meeting that you attended last week um, 
you know, that we had last Tuesday, mm -hmm. apparently a report had come out on, the, on WLRN and we have residents here that are asking for uh, comments about the hemispheres. And it's not a topic I will shy away from, um, but I certainly have had more time than both of you. So I can go first, the mayor can go first, commissioner, it's up to you. I want you to know the floor is open to you. The floor, I mean the well, thank you. I do think um, you probably have more and I know the mayor's all geared up to talk about the hemisphere. She's been waiting <laughs> for that. So I'm gonna I'm let you guys lead this because I know the mayor's been itching at the bit. No, no. Thank I'll chime you. in no, anytime. No. Okay, you've, been, right? you've been working on one condo when I guess this fell. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. I'll take mine. You take that one. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, well, first of all, and, and thank you again, Annabelle, for all your hard work and everyone's hard work is, and it's only just begun. And I'm sorry to hear about Bay Harbor and maybe, you know, even if one evening we go down or something to their next meeting and just speak about it, it would be worthwhile. With that said, uh, hemispheres, <laughs> um, we just in the commission just, and I actually posted it on their Facebook page response. After the channel 10 report, obviously it came to me and the commission while we were on break. So I responded to channel 10, but obviously like it didn't make the story glamorous in any way. Uh, discussion about communication or lack of communication with the contractor. And to put it in a nutshell, the building process obviously is arduous. And yes, we do. Uh, we did let go one of our, our building official, but I'm telling you that we have an acting building official. We have an assistant building official. We've already hired two new clerks. But with that said, after this occurrence with Channel 10, and I don't know if WLRN or if it was just proactive uh, Board of Rules and Appeals, met with our staff and concurred that our staff was not at fault and our city wasn't at fault, mm -hmm. that there was lack of communication in which I had shared that the contractor was having. As a matter of fact, I've received an email from him apologizing for his position because those of you that know me, I'm pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, we'll take the blame, good, bad, ugly, and move forward and address it. So with that said, particularly condos going into contracts with contractors need to understand that there is a process. Our building department must uphold the law and contractors that are licensed in the state of Florida and licensed here in Broward County should and must know the rules and understand what they have to file. With that, all we can tell them is that their permit is incomplete and why. We cannot fill out permits for them. We cannot respond to them. Um, you know, we can guide them and assist them. And certainly in this case, um, I personally was uh, disappointed. I don't know how my colleagues feel about it, is that we've met with hemispheres. We go out, we make ourselves accessible. We give out our phone numbers. We were not even invited, nor was our building official or anyone from the city, a city official, able to at least go to this meeting and have a candid discussion with someone. Um, the contractor said that he, um, you know, basically somebody in the building had called the uh, channel 10 and, you know, that's their prerogative. But um, I am here to assure you that after a thorough review, we have been, um, we addressed the issue and moving on from it. Uh, as far as the permits, I believe that they, you know, they have been escalated as far as their, you know, fulfillment. Um, I haven't asked Vanessa or gotten an update uh, since the last communication we got from staff. More importantly, 40-year inspections, by co our commission knows this, and staff has been robustly um, adding staff. Um, I spoke about this. The 40-year inspection, in, in my mind, it's critical, it's important, it needs to be amended, obviously, from all these discussions, but actually it's an unfunded mandate for our city. We have now gone into our general fund and hired more employees specifically for the 40-year inspection issues. Um, coming this September, everyone that has not filed one will be receiving a notice. We also have been proactive. There's a list on our website of every condo, uh, whether they passed their 40 year inspection, whether they haven't. Um, and in addition, the 50 year inspection, which is coming up. So we encourage you to visit our website at www.cohb.org.
There's a landing page. There's one for 40 year inspections. It's with all the answers and questions, Q and A. I also encourage every person to go on our permit portal and actually go in. If you have a permit number, you can actually see what the comments are and where those permits are in a process. Certainly you can call if any one of us um, and we'll help you through that process. But, you know, we're here to help and, and not everybody, you know, nothing's perfect and there is a uh, human error possible, but uh, again, we actually had the Board of Rules and Appeal, looked at our process, and they said, no, this was this was the fault of miscommunication from the contractor, not our staff. Thank you. I think I did it. Anybody else? Commissioner Tov or Commissioner Lazaro, anything to, to add? Uh, no, not for Commissioner Lazaro. I think I think you covered it well. I mean, I think I think those that know me know that you know if I if I think that the city was in error, um, I always hold the city accountable, and I speak mm -hmm. about I speak about it publicly, and I've pointed out past mistakes um, and acts that I really did not agree with. Um, I'm not talking about the commission; I'm talking about city manager's office or policies. Um, not an attack on any on any commissioner. Um, so in this instance, I feel really honestly used and I don't appreciate it. And I'll tell you why, because the Wednesday, which was before the about five days before the report on channel 10 came out, the hemispheres management manager contacted me. She called me, complained. It seemed very, I was Oh my, oh my goodness, this is really you know worrisome. I said, please send it to me in an email and so that I could forward it. I also, because I like to be transparent, I like to have everything so there's public record of every every communication, especially when it comes to permit work and in light of the in light of the tragedy and surfside. And you know, she did, she put everything in an email, I forwarded it to the city manager's office. And I really feel as if what's happening is more like don't look at what we've done, meaning on the hemisphere side, don't look at what we've done. Let's take the attention away from us. And it's the city's fault. It's not our fault. And I think that's what's happening here. And I really don't appreciate being used in that way because it seemed like the conversation was, we need your assistance. There were some things that were done that were wrong. And so when the city was so responsive and the city manager's office was immediately responsive and, and got the, um, uh, Director Leroy involved, and there were there were communication. I mean, email after email after email, and so on Monday morning to have Channel Ten, and I and I'm all for the media coming and asking questions and holding us accountable. I'm all for it. Uh, and and you know if we've done something, and I there is an email. Uh, sorry, a text message that I sent our assistant city manager at the time, and I said if we've done anything wrong, we need to own up to it. Um, and, and of course she replied in kind and said, absolutely. But it turned, I, I really, really feel this one was more, uh, you know, we don't want the heat on us. So we're gonna put it on the city with this specific instance. And I, I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. And so, you know, if there's anyone from the hemispheres I would really appreciate it. Please don't contact me. You're more than welcome to send me an email from the management company, but I'm just going to forward it to the city manager's office. I think this, in this particular instance, it was disingenuous. And the ones that really um, suffer from all of this are the residents and the condo owners because they already have a high level of stress. And so this adds more stress to them. But then the other um, individuals that are really like collateral damage is our city staff and they don't deserve it. Dr. Earl doesn't deserve it. Vanessa Leroy doesn't deserve it. Um, you know, they're 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 bearing the brunt of a lot of abuse in the last month and a half in general because people are just it's just one tragedy after the other. We had COVID and the hardships with that, and then Champlain Towers and living in condos and the high assessments. Everybody is just really uh, on edge. Uh, but that doesn't justify a lot of the language and a lot of the abuse that our staff has to bear. So, um, so in this instance, I, I, I take the city side and especially having communication that um, the Board of uh, Regulation and Appeals 
came to the city immediately after they saw the report on Channel 10. And there's communication about them saying that the, the, the city in this instance is not at fault. And so if you are being told that the city is at fault and you want any of the communication of the emails, just email me if you're living in the hemispheres, I'll be more than happy to forward you the emails that I have. Um, but that's just my, that's just my, uh, my take on it. I'm, you know, I'm really, um, I'm really discouraged that that, that was going on and, and so many people don't deserve that condo owners and definitely this, the city staff does not deserve that. So that's, that's my take on the, on the hemispheres. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be back next week. I see Commissioner Lazar, you unmuted yourself. I'm not, well, make yeah. sure to give everyone a turn. Um, we'll be back next week. Same time, 6.30. We'll have Eric Glazier, an attorney on. We'll have um, Julia Rabina on again. And then we'll have a follow-up meeting the, the week after that. Um, you know, I really uh, want to thank, you know, the, the ordinance uh, that I sponsored. It took years to put together. Um, I really want to thank you, uh, Mayor Cooper. And, you know, it means the world now that you um, have joined Commissioner Lazaro, it makes it a lot easier now to know that I can go in and at least have both of you supporting it. So, um, you know, thank, thank, thank you both. Mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate it. Commissioner Lazaro, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I also wanted to say that, you know, I understand the city's frustration, but, or the residents, and I understand the fear. But the other thing that I think people do not realize is this is not really in our purview. I mean, when we were elected, this is not um, you know, what we were elected to do. And when we do extend our help or offer to help, it's really because we're trying to be good elected officials. And I feel like when they don't get what they want, when people don't get the response or get the time that we also carry some of that brunt, which I'm willing to take. Mm -hmm. But like you said, I'm not willing to take it for the staff. You know, they, they can't speak back, we can. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, you know, I even said to the city manager, unfortunately, you know, you kind of like you work for us and we work for them, you know, and that and that's how that works. That, them being the residents. The top, we're, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're at the bottom. They're at the top. But and I get that. But by the same token, you know, I don't think people understand what our actual role is. And, you know, when people are upset about the permits, I always say, well, be glad that, you know, me or you know Commissioner Todd that we can actually there's people out there walking around that have no idea what to do and they are freaking out and I get it but those people that know how to reach out to us especially the ones that know they can call me and they're like I don't want to bother you I didn't want to ask you know I'm happy to help people but I also want to be respected for you know and I think Mayor Cooper went through this a little bit with the avant-garde and the walkway you know we're not in control of construction and we have nothing to do with whether or not a walkway gets open. And if there's a health and safety matter, mm -hmm. just because we're commissioners, we can't just say, well, we don't care. We, we want you to open the walkway. And I think, you know, there's a frustration that, you know, kind of gets handed over to us that I just think people need to kind of understand what our role is in the city and what our role is not. So, um, you know, and I appreciate everyone, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we really are very considerate about that but I think that's important to recognize and I am listen when people call me just real quickly and say the building department's a mess it's horrible I go you're right I mean I'm not you know at this time we, there's no de there's no defending it it's indefensible okay so we're trying to fix it and that's the best that we can do because telling us repeatedly how bad it is, is not going to fix it any faster. So we hear you, we understand, but if anybody, and I offered this last week and I did send it to somebody, I forget who was on last week that asked for it. I have the timeline of all of the hemispheres. We all have it. Yep. All four buildings, what they asked for, when we responded, Anybody who would like to see that either in the hemispheres or otherwise can email any one of us and we will send that to you. You can see the timeline of when they asked and how we responded and what happened accordingly. Thank you. Commissioner, do you want to give your contact info? Yeah, I'll put it right here. You want me to put it in the box? Well, why don't you verbalize it as well so that um, because it's going to be on um, closed caption, why don't you also verbalize it if, okay. you, if you like, if okay. you like. 
And M Lazaro, L A Z A R O W, my first initial M at cohb.org. And my cell phone is 305 607 5683. 305-607-5683. I don't know who HP is, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Mayor Cooper, would you like to share your contact info? Yep, it's Mayor Joy Cooper, 954-632-5700. Again, that's 632-5700. And uh, thank you again. I <laughs> really appreciate your... your um, having the forum commissioner Thanks for the invitation thank you i hope you'll be on next next tuesday as well <laughs> my mm -hmm. dog's just knocked over some stuff oh my god this is going to be hilarious now sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and i would say too um you know if you live in a condo and because what's going on with the task force and the questions if you do have um suggestions please email them to us uh, so we can incorporate them. And the task force will be having public participation. I'll make sure that um, they change some dates because they were gonna only have three meetings. Now we're having four meetings. So they changed the public meeting hearing, but by next Tuesday, I'll have a date for everyone for that. If they wanna put in public comments or send them to Mayor Geller, who is chairing that task force, okay? And, and just as a final note, I, there was so much positive feedback for last week's meeting, mm -hmm. especially seeing people that felt hopeful that mm -hmm. we were collectively, my colleagues, collectively working together. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I hope we, I hope we keep that going. And I want to extend my invitation to both of you for any, you know, future meetings that I'll have. So please, um, Mark in your calendars for next Tuesday at 6.30 and then the following Tuesday at 6.30. Again, I'd love to have you on there. If you, uh, where's the task? Alan, we'll, uh, we'll address, um, it's 8.36, so we're way beyond. Um, we, I will address via an email and we will see you again, Alan, next week. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, you'll, you'll all get my email. So if you have any questions for the attorney next week or for Julia Rabina, but you will have, you know, you'll have legal advice uh, next week. So take advantage of it and email, um, email us questions. And, you know, the three of us, well, let me speak for myself, but uh, remain at your service. And, um, you know, uh, George, thank you for informing, informative, keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your night. And my, uh, my colleagues and I will see you again. Thank you, Alan. That's very kind of you. Uh, my colleagues and I will see you again next Tuesday. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you Mayor. Bye. 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 Bye.